Hey, how's it going everybody? So in this video, I want to look a little bit more at the Limit Breaker stuff now that we are starting to see um, heroes that are, are Limit Broken, I guess is the way to say that. So we have Morel here and level 85. If you don't already know, there's more stats gained than just what you would see from five additional levels. There's like a bonus that's granted right as you Limit Break. And then these levels seem to climb more like they are, I don't know, two levels at a time or something. So maybe this is more like adding 12 to 15 levels. I haven't tried to do the math for that, but I, I have definitely noticed that there are more stats gained than you would gain from five levels. So um, what I want to do is compare what kind of performance we're seeing and the stats that we're seeing from the limit broken version with a version that I will um, edit in from the other Morel testing video that I've done. So if you haven't tried Gems and Legends yet, come check it out and play alongside me. It's another really fun and deep strategy RPG like Empires and Puzzles, but with some fun new twists and a lot of people from Empires and Puzzles have already joined. Not only can you help out the channel by using the download link in the description of this video, but if you enter the code hashtag Spock underscore 2021 hashtag in the global chat, you can get a nice starter bonus including gold, gems, gold scrolls, and a free epic hero Elidor, all valued at about 50 bucks. Once you join, you'll also get access to a set of beginner events where you can earn another epic hero Soliana, a five-star legendary set of equipment, which is what you use to boost the stats and performance of your heroes, and a platinum scroll for another epic or legendary hero in the game. Now, those links and codes are in the description down below. Just be sure to enter that code in the global chat after finishing the tutorial within 24 hours of downloading the game, and I look forward to seeing you all there. To try to see, like, all right, here are some resources that most people don't even have yet, right? You would have had to gotten had to have gotten an ether three for ice from either tournament or war loot. And a lot of people don't have that yet. So these are extremely rare resources at the moment. And you at, at this point, there's no way to get them back. So once you spend them on a hero, you don't get them back. So a lot of people are probably asking the question, what should I use these on? Should I wait to see what happens? Um, I think there are some key four stars that could make sense to use the limit break stuff on, but I haven't done so yet either. So what I want to show you is what kind of boost do you actually get from using those? So we've done a testing video on this hero before, and I can edit in um, what that hit looks like. Because with this passive, the first time around, you get 30% um, added to its power, whatever that means exactly. I don't know where in the damage calculation that happens. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking about this, looking at this hero going, okay, how much, what does this actually look like? Like the testing videos I like to do are like, you know, what kind of damage can you expect and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna jump in here and look at this one and then I will stitch in the other one. So you can see the comparison in real time to see how worth it it seems. So, the main point here is just to try to set off this hero. Which is very easy to do, apparently. Okay, so first charge is going off now. And we're looking at 400 low 400s to mid 400s. I think 444 was the highest that I saw. Um, the defense sound, all this stuff doesn't change. So those would be the advantages you'd get. With a hero like this, you're gonna get a bit more damage from the stat increases. Obviously the slash attacks and tile damage on offense will be higher. Defensive stats are higher, so you're just gaining a more robust hero. But um, it seems like if you're going to want to use it on a damage dealer, you're going to want to see a pretty decent increase in special skill damage. And I don't think we're seeing much. It'll be interesting when I add the other video in to see exactly what that looks like. But I'm not anticipating um, that much, to be honest. Okay, so that is all I wanted to show for this part. So in just a second you will see what sort of damage you're getting um, from the 
standard version um, and then we can look at whether it makes sense to use the limit break on this type of hero. Okay, so first I want to compare the stats of the limit broken version with the other version that I faced in a previous video and then we'll look at the damage of each. Fortunately, I attacked that team with the same one I did this time so we can really closely compare the numbers. Keep in mind that with the damage numbers, there is a random variable in there so they can vary so they're not an exact comparison. You know, the limit broken version could have hit a little softer for whatever reason because of that random variable and the normal version could have hit a little bit harder. So don't don't uh, assume these to be exact numbers. Um, but yeah, looking at the limit broken stats, we have... Oh, also, I wanted to mention that the normal version I fought did not seem to be the max attack version. If you go max attack with emblems, you're looking at about 900 attack. So keep that in mind. The builds are not identical, but I'm doing the best I can here. So um, I guess I don't know that this one that we're looking at now is max attack, but I'm going to go ahead and assume it is. If you know otherwise, let me know in the comments. So attack of 961, defense 863. HP 1683, obviously extremely impressive stats. Uh, looks like the attack is going up by about 60, uh, defense about the same, and HP, it's just kind of insane to be putting up attack and defense numbers that high and be bordering on 1700 HP. That's pretty crazy. So what you're going to see when we compare this damage is that the damage is not that big, so what you're really kind of paying for with these limit breaks are the higher stats which gain you greater survivability and um, attack or tile damage. So looking at the non-limit broken version, uh, we have an attack of 885, which like I said is one node short of the 900 you can get up to. Um, and I think the um, defense is typically around 803 if you do the um, attack path. So they went a little bit higher on HP here with this build. So again, not a perfect comparison, but it gives you a good idea. So we have attack 885, defense 781, HP 1603. Pretty good stats. Um, slightly low on defense, if you can even say that, for like a brand new elite tier hero. Um, but yeah, that's the comparison. You can see the stat differences are quite significant. Um, considering that they're only supposed to be five levels apart. One is level 80, one's level 85. So uh, that's why I had mentioned that it's not really five levels. It's, it's, the number is five, but it's moving a lot more than that. Normally you would not gain that much in five levels. Um, so going to the damage, if we look at the limit broken version, um, you can see I froze it on the frame of damage. So we've got 320 on... Phileas Fog, he has a passive that reduces damage, uh, which is why it's so much lower. So this kind of give you, gives you an idea of how valuable that effect is, because it's saving him from about 100 damage that he probably would have taken otherwise, somewhere around there, which is pretty great. Regards taking 430, Kingston 425, Hell 44, 44 and Toxicondra 404. So this is the limit broken version. This is the first charge you can see on Morel there. The passive is going off, which is boosted damage. So this is probably the highest the damage can get against a team of emblemed five stars. I'm pretty sure we have max troops on them and they have the defense bonus, which we know is, um, they're messing with it right now. So we don't know if this is 20% or not because they're doing some tests. Okay, so if we look at the normal version, we can really compare and contrast. So now we have 300 on Fog, 390 on Regard, 413 on Kingston, 418 on Hell, and 384 on Toxicondra. So Toxicondra was at 404, I believe, and now we're at 384. So that's gone up 20. Phileas Fog was at 320, and he's at 300 here. So that's about 20 difference. Regard uh, was at 429, and now we're at 390, so that one's gone up by almost 40. Um, 
Kingston was at 425 with the stronger version, and now we're at 413, so that's pretty negligible, and it shows you some of the variability. And then Hell has gone up by under 30. So I was surprised to see how little the damage varied. I think the way the damage works in this game is that the higher the percentage gets, the steeper or the faster the damage increases. So if we were to do this same test with a sniper, which I'm gonna try and do now, I think we would see much more significant differences in the numbers than we do uh, with a hero like Morel, who's only hitting at like 180%, I think, 190 maybe. So the difference is pretty negligible. Of course, more damage is always better, but would I use an ultra rare resource on a hero like this just for that damage gain? No. So that's why I wanted to mention that keep in mind you are sort of paying for the stat boost as well. But for me, this is a really good argument, uh, which was already clear to me, but if anyone had their doubts about it, this is a really good argument for using limit breaks only on the most essential heroes. Um, and it's kind of like emblems for certain heroes and certain classes like black knight for example is a terrible barbarian um his attack stat is low the bleed is negligible you're just purely putting emblems on him so you can boost his stats and that could be a good way to think about limit breaks as well i'm not totally certain of my opinion on that but that's the biggest change we're seeing here is the stat boost is pretty tremendous um while the damage is not negligible, but not high enough to warrant um, such an expensive resource, in my opinion. So do I know who I would use them on? Not totally, but it does seem like limit breaks may be more valuable. I mean, if you're a top alliance, you're going to do it for your defense team. I think that's not what I would want to do, because when defense teams invariably change and the meta shifts... Now you have to, expensive resources uh, permanently tied up in heroes that you might be using a lot less. So that's the way I like to play the game is, is to, to not have to be beholden to always being the strongest defense team possible. But I would want to use these on a hero um, who will stand to gain the most from a stat boost. Like a hero like maybe Krampus is a popular choice because his stats are massive. Um, with that limit break and that um, boosts his survivability even more. Um, but also heroes that are versatile and primarily um, excelling on offense. So my mind might still change on this. This is the first like official exploration that I've done looking at numbers. Uh, it's pretty interesting to me to see um, or to come to the conclusions that I have. I plan to... Um, expand on this um, even more as time goes on and I will not be making any limit break decisions for a while for that reason unless I have enough to limit break say mm -hmm. a key hero like Regard or Proteus perhaps and enough left over for a five star win and if I decide who I'd want to use that on. So let me know what you think in the comments down below uh, what your thoughts on this are if this has changed your mind, if this is what you were thinking already, share all that stuff in the comments. Um, and, you know, have a discussion with each other down there. I think it's uh, good to lean on that community aspect. Uh, please leave a like on this video as a way to show your support and to help out the channel. Uh, subscribe as well. And, yeah. Share your thoughts. Let's keep the conversation going. And I plan to do more videos like this in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.